Dallas News' regular broadcast. My name is John T. McCullier. Today we are joined once again by Ben Fuchs, the pharmacist who advocates for the body's natural ability to heal. Ben, welcome back. Hey, John T. Good to see you again. Uh, this is a, uh, these are a lot of fun, so I'm, I'm really stoked that we're doing this. Um, I had a day-to-day -day where with the surf's going off right now. Everybody, you know, i got all these friends. You're like, come on, John T., where are you? Uh, Trying to, figure out, video. trying to figure out what the priorities are in my life. And um, this is one thing that I, I definitely feel is, is worthwhile. Um, you were you were mentioning um, uh, some maybe new information about statins. and, and Yeah, uh, this is an article that I uh, somebody sent me today, uh, dated April 4th, 2018, from the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, a trend towards higher basal cell carcinoma. Uh, basal, basal cell carcinoma risk with longer duration of statin use in men. Uh, basal cell carcinoma is one of the forms of skin cancer, and it's now been associated with, cholest with cholesterol-lowering drugs, statin drugs. It doesn't come as a surprise to me. Uh, cholesterol is an incredibly important molecule in the body, and once you start monkeying around with basic fundamental chemistry, and cholesterol chemistry is basic fundamental chemistry in the body, you, you run the risk of all kinds of problems, cancer being one of them. Um, ironically, we take statin drugs and we take drugs to get better, and you end up with side effects and toxicity. In this case, statin drugs have been linked to cancer, particularly skin cancer. But we've known about this association between uh, statin drugs and cancer for a long time. In fact, uh, from 1996, uh, this is a famous study on statin drugs and ro uh, cancer in rodents. The results of this study published in uh, the journal JAMA, Journal of the American Medical Association, in 1996, all members of the most popular classes of lipid-lowering drugs, that's fat-lowering drugs, the fibrates, which were the old-school statins before statins came out, and statins caused cancer in rodents. And authors of the study said that statins and fibrates should be avoided except in patients at high short-term risk of coronary heart disease. That's because of the risks of cancer. Mm. Uh, statin drugs have been associated with other forms of cancer as well. This is from a review uh, this is from a, an article of December 2011 in the uh, December 2011 is issue mm -hmm. of prostate. Men who use statins showed a significant increase in the risk of prostate cancer when compared with men who had never used the cholesterol-lowering drugs. Other are, other studies uh, show statins increase cancer in segments of the population that had breast cancer previously, had prostate cancer previously. Uh, in the Prosper study, which was a study done on a particular drug called pravastatin or pravacol is the brand name. Uh, elderly men showed a significant increase in cancers uh, when they took pravastatin, pravastatin, an alarming increase in breast cancer incidence, some of which was recurrent, was seen in women who were on Pravacol or Pravastatin. Uh, authors say that it is not infrequent to find an association between recurrent breast cancer and current statin therapy. Statin therapy has been associated with tumor progression, leading to radical cystectomy, as meant to take the bladder out for folks who are treated with bladder cancer. So there's all kinds of evidence that suggests that statin drugs are associated with cancer. But do you knew, but uh, is, it, is it just me or have uh, you and uh, uh, the uh, sort of natural healing community been uh, pointing to statins as one of the most uh, damaging, frightening sort of drugs that you can be on for some time now? It's great to hear this sub substantiated and people do, are doing yes. the kind of research they should be doing. But this isn't news to me. You, I've heard you say this years exactly. ago. Exactly. Exactly. It's not news. You know, and, and we get, it's very dramatic when you hear things like, oh, this drug causes cancer. But the idea is that drugs are not good. They mess up the biochemistry of the body. And even if you mask symptoms or you reduce risks, at the end of the day, the body's got to eliminate the drug. The drug is, is, considered, to be the, is considered by the body to be verboten, forbidden. It has mm. to be eliminated. Mm. And not only that, but you expend nutritional resources, your vitamin C, your B complex, your mm. magnesium, your copper, your manganese, your zinc. Your body has to utilize these nutrients in order to detoxify the drug. So now you run higher risks of uh, uh, diseases or illnesses that are associated with nutritional deficiencies. You run higher risks of zinc deficiency issues and magnesium deficiency right, issues. Right. Now your body's using these nutrients to get rid of the drugs, and many of these drugs, ironic, or many of these nutrients, ironically, mm. are used by the body to protect the heart. So you lose your magnesium, 
because your body's yeah. trying to eliminate the uh, the statin drug, and magnesium is one of the most cardioprotective supplements there are. Yeah. Coenzyme Q10 is made in the same biochemical processes that make cholesterol. So when you take your statin drugs, you're depriving your body of coenzyme Q10, which is one of the heart's most protective nutrients. We know statin drugs are associated with diabetes. Mm. Uh, in fact, it's so it, the link is so significant that the FDA mandates a little black box warning is put on the on the bottle and on the package insert of statin drugs that the mm. pharmacists get mm. that says, warn your patients they may get diabetes, diabetes being another risk factor for heart disease. So you take you take your statin drugs yeah. to reduce cardiovascular issues and you end up with diabetes, which causes, which causes cardiovascular, cardiovascular issues. issues. But, but ben, I feel like you stress. you are uniquely capable of illuminating the, uh, the true role of cholesterol because cholesterol in some cases will build up in the arteries and cause heart disease, it's completely demonized. Yes, it's not the cholesterol's fault. Mm. Cholesterol, as it turns out, is a very important stress management molecule. It's a building molecule. It's a repair molecule. It's a precursor to all of the body's youth and fertility, stress management, and life, life molecules, steroid hormones. It's awesome. All cholesterol all is good. Like cholesterol, good, good stuff. stuff. In fact, yeah. lowering cholesterol or having too low a, mm. level, a level of cholesterol can actually be a problem, including and it can uh, it can also cause cancer itself. For example, from the journal Prostate, April 2017, patients undergoing radiation and prostate prostatectomy, so they take the prostate out, fare better with higher levels of LDL cholesterol. Hmm. From the journal uh, International Journal of Cancer, April 2017, a recent study found that those with lung cancer had the highest cholesterol. Uh, I'm sorry, those with lung cancer and the highest cholesterol levels had a 67% less chance of dying. Wow. Uh, from the Journal of Public Library of mm. Science, January 2013, women with the highest cholesterol levels had the lowest risk of breast cancer, 30% lower. The same study showed that there was a 39% lower risk of melanoma and a 39% lower risk of uh, lymphoma, leukemia, when their cholesterol levels were the highest. From the journal Hepatogastroenterology, mm. September 1998, uh, studies suggest that those with higher cholesterol levels are protected from colorectal cancer versus those with lower levels. What I'm saying here is cholesterol is a critical and important substance for health, for wellness, for building and repair, for stress management. You don't want to artificially lower your cholesterol. The way you want to protect your heart is not by artificially suppressing the production of a, such an important biomolecule like cholesterol, but it's to make sure you're supplementing, make sure you're eating correctly, make sure you're exercising, make sure you're doing all the things you need to do to live a good long life and to, and to be healthy no matter what. The B vitamins, mm -hmm. vitamin C, essential fatty acids, magnesium, coenzyme Q10, lowering your blood sugar, uh, reducing your intake of trans fats, intermittent mm -hmm. fasting, reducing your calories, exercise. There's no real role for drug therapy unless you decide that you want to drink the Kool-Aid. If you decide that you want to participate in the medical model, and, and I can understand there's a, a fear element that takes mm -hmm. place when we go to the doctor and they mm -hmm. say, oh, you're going to get a heart attack if you don't take these right. drugs. Right. You know, if you, if you buy into it, fine, but it, it really is not necessary. And to me, statin drugs, or all drugs, but in particular, statin drugs are, are, are not worth the, the, the cost, and they're more, they do more harm than good in the long run, like all drugs do. I don't want to demonize statin drugs specifically because it really is the pharmacomedical model. Drugs right. do more harm than good. Even if they will mask a symptom, and even if sometimes you may need one in, a, in kind of like a short-term way until you, until you manage or control or, or recover from bad living, right. Uh, right. get off of it as soon as possible. Wean yourself off and then get off of it as soon as possible and respect yeah. cholesterol. In fact, eat cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Use cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Cholesterol is a building substance. You don't necessarily need to eat it because your body will make cholesterol. And when your cholesterol is elevated artificially, regard that as a sign, or not artificially, but when, you're, when your cholesterol levels are high, regard that as a sign that your body is under stress. Bodybuilders, for example, or people who are working out will have higher levels of cholesterol because their body's trying to repair. If you're exercising a lot, you know, don't, you don't necessarily need to worry about your high cholesterol. But if your cholesterol is really high and you're not working out and there's no obvious signs of repair, consider that you might be in, uh, taking in too much sugar. There's a very important relationship between elevated cholesterol and, and high blood sugar mm -hmm. and insulin resistance. In fact, insulin resistance and high blood sugar go hand in hand with elevated cholesterol. Mm -hmm. It could be that there's some kind of inflammation going on. It could be there's some kind of autoimmune problem that's happening. So 
regard your high cholesterol levels, if you have high cholesterol levels, as a sign that there's something, that, there's some bad living that's going on. It doesn't necessarily mean that you need a statin drug to compel your body to lower your cholesterol, lower your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. In almost all cases, when you go on the ketogenic diet or you go on a low calorie diet or you uh, practice intermittent fasting or you reduce your sugar intake or you use things like chromium, vanadium, the B-complex that help your body process sugar, your cholesterol will drop. Mm -hmm. uh, so so another go, thing, go on a statin drug or... is the foods that we're not supposed to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, the foods that contain the cholesterol, the eggs, for example, mm. are power foods. They're building foods. Cholesterol is found in nature in what I call with the cholesterol complex. It's always associated with things like vitamin A and lecithin and uh, good fats, quality fats. It's, it's associated with building elements. It's in organ meats. It's in it, eggs. It's it, in dairy. It's in your it's brain, in right? Your, your brain is like largely cholesterol, isn't it? Your brain is large. Well, there's a lot of cholesterol in your brain, mm. but your cell membranes contain cholesterol as part of their uh, as part of their electrochemical processing system. So cholesterol is said to be mm. piezoelectric. That is when it compresses, when it presses, uh, or when it deforms, it generates an electrical charge. So cell membranes have cholesterol, and wherever there's a high electrical, a lot of electrical activity in the body, you'll find cholesterol located in those kinds of cells, the electrical cells. So there's cholesterol in your brain. Uh, cholesterol is low levels of cholesterol associated with depression. Low levels of cholesterol are associated with suicidal ideation. So low levels of cholesterol are associated with memory problems. Mm. So for your brain, for depression, for uh, memory problems, eat cholesterol mm. or eat foods that contain the cholesterol complex, organ meats, uh, eggs, uh, fish, fish and seafood mm. have always been known to be brain foods, largely because they have a, a, a good amount of cholesterol, also because they have good fats, mm. something called mm. omega-3 fats, or specifically DHA and EPA, which are super important for the brain and the nervous system. Um, if you're dealing with uh, mental problems, depression, uh, memory problems, you wanna prevent Alzheimer's disease, in addition to doing the cholesterol complex, what I call the cholesterol complex, which is found in organ meats and dairy and eggs, uh, and also fish. Make sure you're using selenium. Make sure you're using sulfur, both of which are important for the thyroid, which plays a major role in helping the body uh, act as a natural antidepressant. Thyroid hormone is the body's natural antidepressant. Hmm. Vitamin D is a wonderful antidepressant. Make sure you're getting out in the sun, yeah. getting your vitamin D. You mm -hmm. see what we're saying here, Jaunty? Good health is not a question of medicalization. It's a question of good living. It's right. a question of good eating. It's right. a question of lifestyle practices. It's a question of nutritional supplementation and exercise. And don't forget spiritual and mental and emotional strategies as well. You trade in, you trade in the bowl of Fruit Loops in the morning for a plate with some sauerkraut and maybe some yes, of fish. Longevity's fish jack for, cheese. Fish, been breakfast. fish is one of the most perfect mm. breakfasts you can have. Mm -mm. A smoked fish, smoked white fish, lox even fresh salmon if you have the time to cook it, salmon and eggs for breakfast. Send the kids off to school with salmon and eggs. Yeah. Ditch the Pop-Tarts, ditch the cereal, mm -hmm. have some salmon, uh, salmon and eggs, and a little bit of yogurt. Mm, you, you know, I, every now Both and then I, the I get my, uh, my daughters out for, uh, um, for some sushi, and uh, to see a five-year-old pick up a huge big piece of uh, yeah. tuna sashimi and shove it in her mouth. Is, Did, is she likes it? Oh, she oh, loves it. That's um, awesome. Uh, That's awesome. No, I, yeah, every time, people I, tell every you time I see you eat it, the mercury and the toxicity, you know, I've heard about that in the oceans, and, mm. and that is an issue. Mm. Mm. Uh, you got to be careful with the sushi, but yeah, if you can do it right, sushi is a true power food. Look mm. for the power foods, the right. foods that are dense in nutrients. So you get right. a lot of bang for your buck. You get lots of nutrition with not a lot of calories, and, and sushi is an ideal mm. food for that. And all, it is, it's interesting because a lot of the foods that have been demonized, particularly eggs, when I think of demonized foods, I think of eggs. Mm. Mm -hmm. the, poor, the poor, humble little egg, which I consider to be the single most perfect food a human being can eat, is an egg for so many reasons. Mm. Even the membrane on the outside part of the egg is loaded mm. with, uh, with powerful nutritional material for your bones, and for your connective tissue, for your heart, for your skin, even just the membrane, let alone mm. the yolk and, and, mm. and uh, even the white. The yolk, man, the yolk is a true, and that's where the cholesterol is. The yolk is the, it, yeah. it's just a powerhouse of building nutrients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've ever had a friend who, um, uh, actually somebody was saying that we should have chickens at our place. I'm not quite ready to commit to that. But if you've ever had a friend who has their own chickens, yeah. and they feed the chickens compost, they feed them leftover bits from their food. Beetles. So it's pretty low cost, you know, you're, you're going to throw the stuff away anyways. And... Uh, the eggs that that a a, a, a home a homegrown uh, uh, well-fed chicken produce yeah. are just incredible. 
Oh, that's They're, awesome. It's like every single egg has got about five. It's like one little egg has got about five times what the egg from the store has. You know. Oh, that's awesome. I get, you know, I, I don't think I've had a, a, fre- a chicken, that, an egg that's, that's that fresh, but I do have friends who have chickens and they say that they, they rave about their eggs, fresh chicken eggs. If you can ever have them give you a, a, a pack of those eggs, uh, you'll, you'll, uh, um, you'll be pretty stoked. <laughs> Well, Ben, uh, um, this is, a, a, I think, a very important topic. I actually believe I have a friend who's taking statin drugs, and I definitely want to have him check this out. Ask him why. You know, I, I'd be curious to know why. Is it to reduce the risk of heart disease? Well, are you doing other things to reduce the risk? And if you're doing other things to reduce the risk, why are you taking the statin drugs? When, you keep, the most important thing to keep in mind is mm-hmm. there are no benign drugs. When you take vitamins in, when you drink your Beyond Tangy Tangerine or you take your OsteoFX or you do your supplements, whatever those are, your ultimate EFAs, mm. your body mm. takes those nutrients and it, it makes it part of itself. It incorporates those nutrients into cells. Mm. It utilizes mm. those nutrients for biochemical reactions and processes. So our body is literally made up of nutrients. When you take right. a statin drug or any drug, not only is it not incorporated into the body, but the body mobilizes every single one of its detoxification mm. resources, which are really amazing, to eliminate that substance, to get that substance out of the system as quickly as possible. Yeah. And that, in a nutshell, is all you need to know about the difference between drugs and nutrients. Mm. Nutrients are used by the body. The body is composed of nutrients. Drugs are, are considered by the body to be poisons and eliminated as rapidly as the body can possibly do it. You know, when somebody with a, a lab coat on says, uh, this is what you got to do, um, for a lot of people, that's it. You know, they don't, they don't know that there is, uh, there's other information out there or there's a different, ways, different ways of approaching the same, the same issue. Caveat emptor. You know what that means? Uh, Caveat emptor. They used to say it in ancient Rome. It's Latin. Uh, Let uh, the buyer beware. Oh, right, right. <laughs> that's great. Uh, Awesome, Ben. Well, uh, that, that was a, a, a fantastic uh, little, little um, you know, download of, uh, of, of possibilities, and uh, um, I, I really appreciate your time. As, as uh, Thank you, John. It's nice to be with you. Thank you all for joining us. This has been a Critical Health News broadcast. Please take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook, visit criticalhealthnews.com for more alternative empowering articles and videos, and sign up for our newsletter. Thank you.